But the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. And Jesus Christ, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to Seek Things Above TV. I'm your host, Lou Chikuni. So we are going to jump right into this story, man, about Mark Driscoll getting kicked out of a men's conference, man. Before we do, if y'all like content like this, like, share, and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, do the stuff to let YouTube know that you like content like this, man. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this, man. So let's start with a little bit of context for you, man. You have... um. James River Church stirred up quite the controversy. So this is a, a mega church scandal erupts at uh, iconic gathering. Okay, so and in the picture you have Mark Driscoll and you got John Lindell, who is the other pastor involved in this story. So James River Church stirred up quite the controversy at their men's conference that took place last week. During the Stronger Men's Conference at James River Church, after a performance by a swordsman prompted prominent ministry leader Mark Driscoll to make a statement about spiritual entities plaguing the church. The swordsman performance by Alex Magala stirred up this controversy after he, he removed his shirt and ascended up a pole for his performance, Sword in Mouth. Now, let's go ahead and jump right into the video, man, because, you know, you just got to see it and then we can uh, kind, of, kind of talk about it as we go through it. Let me do this. Um... I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. And I wanna be very careful with this and it's not what I wanna say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. All right, so notice that up until this point, there's no opposition to what he's saying. People are, it seems there's actually some cheers, some applause going on, and they're agreeing with him. I'll just come out and say, you know, as far as this whole thing about the uh, the Jezebel spirit and all of that, I think these are highly overused terms, especially by people who believe in things like deliverance ministry and other things that are uh, questionable spiritual activities, uh, just to put it uh, plainly. So, uh, yeah, the Jezebel spirit and, and those descriptions of what was going on being that I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I think he's trying to make the point that there is something wrong with the way that they're conducting these uh, conferences and that there is something uh, sexually immoral. At least there's there's a hint of that. There's something wrong here in those kind of terms. OK, so let's continue with the rest of the video, and then we'll uh, come back on the other end here. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descended. And then swallowed a sword and Jesus cried okay Pastor John I'll receive that thank you all right so that's the first part of this conversation this whole thing that went down here man so um we got to talk about this so you have Mark Driscoll make this statement at this men's conference and if you see when we pan back over here, we get back to this video, you see the scale of the conference, you see what else is going on there. And there were other activities going on. It looked like there was a guy riding a bike, doing like acrobatic trip, tricks on a bike and other stuff, man. This place is a big venue. 
And so he takes issue with what's going on, makes the statement. And then the, the pastor, John Lindell, I guess this is the guy who may have been who organized the joint, or I don't know if exactly if this is actually at their church. It could be at their church, but he took issue with Mar what Mark Driscoll said. Now, before we play what the pastor said, uh, John Lindell said, I'll just say that I think some of the imagery that Mark Driscoll is alluding to here and trying to liken things like the high places to this guy being on a stage and the, the pole being like an Asherah pole and then the, there being an arrogance in the man ascending on this flag, on this uh, pole, um, I think those are exaggerated things. I think he's actually exaggerating, uh, in my point of view, I, I, I don't see that being uh, a connection there. I don't see the connection there. I think what you can just say is, hey, look, this is some improper stuff in terms of like, is this necessary? Because that's the heart of the conversation. Is this necessary for a men's conference? Do y'all need this stuff for a men's conference? Now, let's hop back to John Lindell and we'll come back with some more commentary uh, at the end of this. But yeah, this is this is just some wild stuff, man. I, I just I don't understand why dudes think they need this for a conference, man. It just it just doesn't make any sense to me. So let's jump back in here over here. So this is actually now, I believe, the clip of the guy dancing right here. But let's, I mean, not dancing, doing the performance that he did. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about what John Lindell had to say here, man. Because so he's claiming that um, this is, first of all, a Matthew 18 issue, right? So he says this is a Matthew 18 issue. Mark Driscoll should have spoken to him privately about this issue. And if you read the context of this uh, article, it actually says that um, as Driscoll continued to speak, Lindell finally told him that he was done and Driscoll came off of the platform. This led to Lindell's explanation that he and Driscoll spoke privately for a half hour before Driscoll came up to speak. He says that according to Matthew 18, this should have been a private discussion between the two of them. Now, for me personally, man, I don't actually think that that's the case with the situation. I do think that this being a public forum, there are times where, because this is such an, an important issue, like if we look at Peter and uh, like Paul's situation in Galatians, right? So Paul rebuked Peter in front of everybody because whatever Peter was doing was against Really, the gospel had gospel implications, so it was that important. So there are scenarios where somebody can be rebuked in front of everybody. And that's not something that is now being disrespectful, but this is now something that needs to be done. There are many instances where we've seen pastors just call out everybody there, and it doesn't appear that there was any prior warning to whatever was taking place. I mean, if you think of like Paul Washer in the Shocking Youth Conference, I don't think Brother Paul went to anybody beforehand and said, hey, I'm about to go off on everybody in this arena. And, you know, these kids uh, are the first ones who are going to get it. Um, so there are times where the rebuke is is open, and I don't think that that's necessarily anything wrong. 
and Matthew 18, if we th- think about it within its context, man, it is, it's really about people in, a, in, in the same church having a dispute and then going uh, to have a discussion. It's not, it definitely doesn't apply to online stuff. And I personally don't think it applies in this situation. Um, he could have, could Mark Driscoll have voiced his displeasure a little bit? Yeah, he could have done that. I think it depends on the level of their relationship. Let me put it that way. I think the level of their re- relationship might dictate that. Now, if they were real brothers, man, they're like super close and he said nothing to him, then yeah, I think that's bugged out. But to me, it seems as though these are people who, I could be wrong, just kind of know each other, you're connected, and then you're invited to his church, and then yes, you're chopping it up with him, you're being cordial, but then you have a moment to speak, and then you say what's on your heart. And so in that instance, I don't necessarily feel like that was wrong. You notice how people were cheering, man, and people were pretty mad at uh John Lindell about this. They were actually going on him. They were like, no, you're disqualified. This, this is, they were booing him when he told Driscoll to, uh, basically said to Mark Driscoll, you're done. So the, the audience started booing him, which was uh, rather interesting. And I think that, uh, I mean, they were receiving what was being said. They were receiving what was being said. Let's go and uh, just kind of finish up by checking out what else is on this clip. The actual guy, on stage in question and what he was doing. And this might give us a little more context of this whole issue. Okay, so looking at this performance that was the the cause of all the controversy and all this stuff, I definitely don't think the guy would try to do anything that had these sexual innuendos to it. In fact, this is actually a very uh, a display of masculinity that I think went wrong because performing what this guy was performing, these these movements, these are more you'd say like advanced, you know, beyond even like CrossFit level stuff where people are doing what they call the human flag, where you're basically holding your body in a horizontal position. And that is, there are very few people who, who could do this, okay? Very few people could do this. And so I don't think that this was meant to be sexual. It was supposed to be actually masculine and powerful, this display for dudes to see and be inspired or whatever. But again, it is just a poor choice of visual uh, additions to a men's conference to choose. And it just comes back to the fact of the 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 question of whether all this was proper to be done i think it's more of a question of was this proper uh as opposed to were the motives of those putting on the show to sort of have something that has some sort of sexual connotations to it you know what i mean sexual in, innuendos or whatever to it I, I i doubt that was the motive um in what they did but what it was is a really a display or revealing the fact that John Lindell and whoever else was in charge of organizing this conference doesn't really reverence the word of God enough. That's really what it comes down to. And the reason why I say that is because if you think that men need to sit around and have people jump in, you know, using, doing tricks on acrobatic tricks on motorbikes, um, doing this kind of stuff on the stage and who else, whatever else went on at this uh, conference, then you don't understand that it is really God's word and men being taught God's word rightly that's going to change their hearts and cause them to obey the Lord and go out and be the men of God that they they should be. That's what should be at the center of this. God's word should be at the center of this. All this other stuff is just a distraction. And to me, I'll say this. I think that the more you see theatrical stuff and all these visually exciting things happening at these conferences or in churches— the more shallow the theology and the teaching is is that is going to be found in those places. That's usually the case because they're just showing you where they put their emphasis. They don't put the emphasis on let's rightly divide God's word. And because that's the case, you're going to see things like this happen. Now, Mark Driscoll is no saint. 
He is definitely somebody who's been at the center of a lot of different controversies. So we're not even going to pretend like he's somebody who, hey, man, Mark is a hero in all of this. No. And I think that he also showed a lack of discernment by even being involved in this situation to begin with. Because if you know what people are about, man, if you know what they're about, then you need to watch your associations with them. You know, like he should have been more discerning about getting involved in this thing in the first place. That's my thoughts on that, y'all. Let me know what y'all think in the comment sections below. I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. All right? God bless y'all, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.